with me. If I'm that good as she said, I surely hope. But if not, please keep it to yourself. Um, I'm coming from Slovenia, and Slovenia is the only country in the world that has love in its name. And I'm coming to a country that I'm not sure, but might just as well be the only one that has ace in its name. So. <laughs> just as we do all the chances of being really, really great. Uh, I will probably not be very true to my um, uh, presentation that I prepared because I restru uh, restructured a few of the things that I want to share with you. Um, first, I'm very flattered that none of the men start running to the exit after uh, we have a set of what I'm going to talk about. But let me first ask you a question. I have some news for you. Can you guess of a country in the world that has 80% of women leaders in all of its major social areas? Business, politics, academia, Iceland is one as a, as a proposition. Maybe some other ideas? Sorry? Sweden? Norway? Very good. Um, uh, well, suggestions. Actually, that country is called Nowhere Land. Nowhere. Nowhere on the face of the earth will you see a country with 80% of women in all of the major decision-making positions. How do you think all the rest of the countries uh, score? <laughs> well, everything else is everywhere land. Everywhere, 80% of men, and if you're lucky, 20% of women, with more or less a little bit of changes. Uh, one of the maybe interesting thoughts is that it's so related to what Jim was talking before. Are women setting ourselves to fail that we are not there? Is the old man's network the ones that are causing it? Is it that we are not used to it? Is it, what is it? The question of women is like an onion. You find a problem, you think you find it, you start to deal with it. It was like first the voting rights, then the education, then the uh, legislation. We got all of that. Nowadays, I'm pretty sure that's the same in Macedonia. It's the women that are coming out of universities, not men. It's 60-40. Soon we'll be talking what's happening to the generation of men and boys. Why are they not finishing their studies? And yet, when we come to decision-making positions, you will see that the, thin, the air is very thin for women. Might it be that we are set up to fail? I don't know. Probably part of it is definitely the answer to that. But just imagine all the great gentlemen in this room. 80% of you would not be here if you would be born a woman. 80% of you would not be here because you would be probably raised up as a woman. And 20% of ladies who are here, or all the ladies who are here, give yourself a round of applause <laughs> because you deserve it. One of the points in making Talent is not something that, that is gender-based. It's just, you, it's put in your cradle when you're born. But the potential, that is not put in the cradle. The potential comes with what can you make of yourself? One, what, what will you do for yourself? But also, how are you brought up? What are the messages that you're getting from, from the environment? What are your teachers telling you? What are you seeing on TV? Do you know that when kids watch TV shows, may, mainstream TV shows, they will see approximately only 40% of women uh, in positions of business, only 10% of women as politicians, only 4% as sports women, as athletes. All the rest are boys, men, guys. And they are just the same, brought up with the idea it is normal not for a woman to have a 
career path like that. And all the men and the boys, they just breathe the air that all the doors are open for you if you're just willing to, to step through. If you have the self-talk, the, uh, the motivation. But for women, it's not the same. And that's why when I talk with my members in, in Slovenia, I tell them, if you run a company and you claim that the best people in your company are the ones that come to the top, and all I can see is men in black, then you are lying. Your, your company is not doing the best it can. Your HR, your strategic HR is faulted. You're not questioning why aren't we having more women. You're just saying they don't want to. They want to help babies. They're not that ambitious. They're not that, they're not that. No, it's a problem with your company because you're not utilizing all the resources that are there. And if you're a CEO, it's your job to utilize all of the resources that are there. So let me show you just a few of the slides and I'll promise I'll jump through most of them. This is how women look when they think of their careers, mostly. <laughs> just really frustrated. Whatever you do, it's really, really difficult to get ahead. And as you can see on this chart, there are lots of information on it, but it shows just that in most of the countries, these are those bars at, um, at the right end, that most of the countries have more educated uh, population in women than they have in men. Then also you can see that most of the countries have approximately close to 50-50% of women and men being on, um, on the, as, as a work workforce. And yet, you can see the humiliating percentages of women in top positions. Well, as you know, as was mentioned, the Norway, they're just at the bottom. They're closest to 42%. But 42% in Norway actually means that there are women in supervisory board positions, not in CEOs or top management. And when you talk to that uh, in Norway, they will say, tell you, we have just the same problems as everybody else. We have only 5% of women CEOs. So the solution is also not in the Norway. But they're trying to do something about it. And I don't know if you know, but it was the man from the conservative uh, party, a minister of economy, that was the one who proposed quotas as a tool of um, better competitiveness. But let's move really, really for, uh, fast forward. This is interesting also, this is a comparison of Slovenia with Denmark. You can see that in Slovenia we have about almost 60% of companies that don't have women um, on boards. And yet and we do have like 41% that we do. But in Denmark, at least in the uh, sample that was taken as comparative, you could not find any company that would have at least one woman uh, also part of the management board. My point is that the question of whether we have men and women at the top of our positions is a question of a modern society. <laughs> it's not only a question of being fair, although it is also a question of being fair. It's not only a question of resources, but also it is a question of the resources. Do you know how much it costs for Macedonia for people to get their university degree? How much to invest in young people? I can tell you the one for Slovenia. We have calculated, our stats um, office has calculated that we input 130,000 euros. That's how much it costs to get the person to the university degree. If you're a businessman and you would have your employees and you would put 130,000 euros in education of every employee, how much would you want out of that? What would be your return on investment? And you would see that you're using only 20% of it. Would you be happy with it? Would your board let you be there for much longer? The question of, I'll just skip through that and go straight to the company view. You have most, I guess, heard that, uh, what, do they, what do companies get out of it? Why should they care about whether we have women on top or not? Well, there are a lot of research that proves that it's a business case. It makes sense. The companies that have more balanced leadership teams are much more, much more successful. There are research from McKinsey, there are research 
for Catalyst, they research from um, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and they all prove that even over 40% of the either profits or revenues or return on investment are higher where you have um, balanced board. But why is it that? Is it just because it's enough that we put just some women uh, on the board and wow, our profits will rise uh, uncontrollably? Quite not. Actually, usually it's that the companies with organizational culture that promotes best people, those companies are good, usually tend to be successful. And if you cherish and nurture such a culture, then people that can wear either skirts or trousers, they both will rise to the top. But also there's more to it. Companies do have quite a lot of benefits if you have balanced teams. One is we, are, we tend to be different according to either risk awards or risk takers. Men know to be more risk taking than women. That's probably why the uh, global economy crashed not that long ago. And women, on the other hand, are less risk takers, which in my guess also is if only women would be running the world or the companies, probably even <coughs> our goals might not be seen that far ahead as men can uh, envision them. Uh, also, the experience is much more diverse. The strategic decisions can be made much better. And let's not forget, women already represent 40 to 80% of purchasing power. In US, it was calculated or uh, calculated that in the next, next decade, women will control two thirds of consumer power. Would you like not to know what that means? Would you like to be the company that doesn't use women as part of their strategic tool? I think that's quite a powerful group to be thinking of. And in those little bags, they are not just shoes. They're not just detergents. In those bags, you can see houses, you can see cars, you can see insurance uh, instruments. All of the different points and things that we can actually buy. People say that the one thing that we don't decide on are the phones, but that's what the kids decide on what we'll have. <laughs> and, but even all of that uh, arguments can be very persuasive, yet this is the picture that we see. This was the same picture, the same ratio, 20 years ago when I was in, uh, in university. And I believe we are the generation that will stop this. It's just nonsense. If you're good, you'll race to the top. If you're not, well, you'll stop somewhere on the way. But 20 years ago in Slovenia, I'm not sure how that is in Macedonia, we're actually doing worse. We have less women in top decision-making decision positions than we had them after uh, socialism. There are more, women had more, actually more better positions in previous times than they have now, which I think is quite disturbing. Um, what we can see here is that women and men usually enter in the company on the same level, but women will be paid less already from the beginning. And then as the career goes by, at least in Slovenia we would come to the middle management positions, which are almost 50%, which is quite good, very good. In Norway they, have, they are struggling to get to the one third. And, uh, but then, as you go from the middle management up, that just you go to the 80-20. And that's a huge question, why? What's happening? And you know all the expression, glass ceiling, but actually the newer literature is suggesting glass labyrinth. It's not that there's just some invisible uh, level to, to where you can rise, because we do see women in top positions. We can now even see a woman in the Volkswagen. But Glass Labyrinth actually says that there's a lot of different things and walls that you hit on, but don't seem, but you can't really recognize them. And it's been said that um, privilege is often not seen by those that indulge in it. And when we talk to men or to women about this, we can be very blindsided. 
because it seems that, well, you could do much better, you could do better if you work harder, if you are smarter. But take you back, let me take you back to your university times. Did you think that your colleagues, women colleagues, were less capable? Or women, do you think that your male colleagues were less or more capable? I guess that we all felt quite, quite similar. We could see somebody's better in that, somebody's better in this. But then things really, really change. And we have to do something more about that. And what we decided to do in, in uh, my association, we started the project. We knew that things will change, that probably Slovenia will really want to adopt also the, uh, either quota or some sort of a law. Um, in a way, that's not that fair also to companies if that comes and you're not prepared. So we wanted to tell them, okay, this is what you can do. And it doesn't matter whether there is a law or not, but if you want to tap into your women, female uh, pool, then there, is things, there are things and methods that you can do. Milena, how much did I use of my time so far? Probably all of it, I guess. Okay, I'll, I'll just try to finish in a couple of minutes. Um, this is what we came up with. It's called the Model 6. It's nothing, nothing, nothing revolutionary. Nothing revolutionary. And yet, when we showed that to Norway, they wanted to know about it more. What we did was we put together, looked really, really deeply into a lot of uh, research, a lot of uh, um, cases that companies try to do, different models, different tools, and we came up with six of the tools that proved to have positive impact on the ratio of women in companies. And these this six are, um, are all of them. One is the rec recruitment and promotions. That means actually that you should not finish your um, recruitment process unless you have three candidates, which I think is quite the norm, but at least one of them has to be of the opposite sex. So it doesn't necessarily mean woman. If you have two women, you should have at least one man, and the, uh, vice versa. And that, makes it, that means that you really, really try to look much harder and to get three competitive candidates for the, uh, for the uh, position that's opened. The other is career mentoring. We also heard the word mentor today. That is important. But what we find, are finding out that it's women that are over-mentored. Women have more mentors than men do. But what they don't have is sponsors. And men, men mentors tend to be more like sponsors. Uh, I know that in our region, this word sponsor and sponsorship has a lot of negative connotation. So please keep that one now in mind as a career sponsor, something as a good thing, not as a sugar daddy, something like that. <laughs> well, the, the thing that was, uh, what they found out, all again, in states, they did the research. And they compared the MBA, M employees that just after the MBA, uh, men and women. Uh, they found that men with um, MBA study and a mentor would earn per year almost $10,000 more than a woman with mentor. So what's the logic in that? We have the same education, we proved we're ambitious, we both have mentors. Why do I earn less? And what they found out is that men's mentors are more often have the shape of sponsor. And that means that they are higher level in the organization, that they have more weight, uh, that they have not physically, but in terms of power, they have more power in the organization, and that they actually can speak for the person when the person is not there. They know that person and they would, be, they would advocate for them. And when women would have sponsors, the rate of promotion would almost be as, as fast as the rate of, males, of uh, men. So having a sponsor is much, much better than having a mentor, even though the word is not nice. Uh, the fourth thing is, 
having certain edu uh, educational programs, uh, career planning, and I think that having a coach, something like Jim was talking about, can be very, very useful in, uh, in this term. But also in addressing the issues where women are, let's say, don't have weak, uh, don't have strong points, and can learn a lot of it. Networking is definitely one of them. And one, the one before last, performance management. Women are really strong believers in met, uh, meritocracy. You will see a lot of really great um, uh, professionals, women professionals, really, really working hard and, and being great at it. And they would just think, well, if, if I just do my job really well, you know, they will see me, they will promote me, and I will just get ahead. <coughs> Guess what? If you eat your sandwich, at your desktop. Nobody sees you. You're just a good worker. You have to work on your visibility. Or as uh, Ichak Adizas said before, um, I think he also talked about it in terms of um, the country, but it goes just the same to, um, to our personal uh, view. But performance management, uh, besides being the KPI system, is also how you can use performance manager for management for engaging your employees. And that means also understanding how women and how men uh, react. And last but not least, if there is no uh, vision in leadership that they see that as a problem or that they see that as an uh, opportunity for being a better company, then none of the other ones that I showed you would actually really matter. Um, I will just finish off with this and just say that for all of you women here, um, do make sure that you uh, raise your visibility, come and find the opportunity to stand on a stage like this and have a great lady like Biliana saying great things about you and you will raise your visibility. But also do that within a company. Go for the uh, important projects. Try to be in the most important ones. Don't... Um, thank you. <laughs> Is that because I'm too long? Should I? Should I? Thank you. Something to write is very good. But thank you. Um, don't go away from difficult, difficult positions and difficult projects. The one that nobody wants, you take them and, and make yourself shine through them. And that that way you will get your competencies, and then you, the other people will be able to promote you. So because you will be a perfect package. Thank you. introduced you um, I she said um, she's she's a great she could be a great role model for women here in this audience and I thought why not to men and uh, and then you started with your presentation and with your with your You're becoming my hero <laughs> <laughs> I haven't finished yet <laughs> then, then stop here because this is quite good And then you started your presentation and you started talking about how it is important, uh, everything that you talked about. And uh, a lot of the statistics I've read and I've seen before and I agree with and I encourage, but at the same time I'm thinking, okay, so until now we've had two men who spoke to the whole audience and who inspired the whole audience. When they talked, I don't think women here um, thought, okay, this is not meant for me. Uh, this is for the guys here, but what is, um, why is it so important that we address them separately uh, and, and uh, tell them that maybe um, they need um, some uh, additional, uh, they do need additional encouragement, but why does it need to be separate? Uh, I uh, would love to be inspired by you and I would love to, for you to be my role model. And I would love to hear more about your accomplishments as a, a business professional, as a um, woman in general. Uh, and, and I think that would have been more inspiring to me as well as, as, as well as it would have been uh, still for the women. Let me answer a, a part of it. Thank you. Well, one, one way of why it's important to think of how women and how men react to something is that the processes that we have them in companies and I'll stick to 
to HR systems and the way we do business within companies was shaped by men. Our history of history of business is male history. And um, all the processes that are there were not shaped by women. So even women don't really know what would it mean if they would be shaped more tailored for us. So that's why good HR people ask themselves the question. And I had the privilege of um, listening to um, President of Dell for Europe, Africa, Middle East, and that sort of stuff. And he said that what he, he explained in his personal view what the actual studies are uh, pinpointing very well. Uh, he said we had to post an opening. And when I was looking through the candidates that applied for that uh, important senior uh, management position post, I said I didn't see two women that I knew would be perfect candidates for that job. And he said, I went to them and I knocked on their door and asked them, why did you apply? And they would say, you know, you, there are 10 criteria and I'm fitting only eight. And he said, you know that we have candidates that are fitting only two of the 10 criteria? So there's the difference of what, I think a lot of what Jim was say, saying is actually applying to, to, to this just as well. We have to understand that women have different concepts of thinking through whether we are, we are more self-critical, overly self-critical. We often don't see our competencies as they are. Therefore, our media, our boss is much more important to our career than to men. That's a research that just was this year proved that uh, just true in Slovenia just as well. And if you understand that these processes go different, and that also for a woman, um, again, um, experience from um, Finland head, headhunter for executive search. He says, if I approach a man, he will come with a competitive, a very good position in a competitive company. The man will come back with an answer to me, if not the next day, at least in seven days. If we contact a woman, it will take three months. The decision process is much longer. We can say, you're really slow. But then again, we can say, they're really loyal to their companies, more than the men, you could say. I, I might just be uh, exaggerating, but uh, I think I see Jim nodding, so I, I'm on the right way. Um, women would also discuss their change of position with their family. Men would just inform their family. Women would also, they, they tend to have much deeper re personal relations in, in a company. And going to a different company means leaving your family leaving your business family and going somewhere that you're not so sure whether you'll feel that good. You men don't have that burden, which is good, but also bad. So if we understand that we do make different decisions based, the different things are important to us, we can shape our HR practices to that. CEOs can, sh uh, can shape their view of how they have to treat um, women, how they have to treat men, as well as we know that you have to adopt your leadership style to to person that you're dealing with. Did I answer part of it? <laughs> I think we all agree that Sonia would be a great role model for everyone here in the